Hey everyone, I'm Lisa from Primitive Gatherings, and I want to talk about one of the most frequently asked questions we get in our groups or on social media, and that is, I want to make a wool quilt. How do I start? So let's explore the possibilities because there are no rules and the possibilities are endless. So the, one of the first things I'm going to show you are wool applique quilts on wool, wool applique on flannel, and wool applique on regular homespun fabric and cottons, and then hand and machine quilting on all those examples. Okay, so let's start with my wool applique on wool background quilt. And Kaylee's here to help me show you these examples. So here is the first one. Now this is wool appliques. On a wool background that has been hand quilted. So I'll let Kaylee zoom in to get you some close ups. Hopefully she won't get the thread bunnies that <laughs> have been collecting on them. Now this is a heavy quilt. There is weight to wool on wool. The hand quilting was especially made easy because of the pattern in the background that I chose. So there is where I hand quilted. Now I hand quilt with number 12 pearl cotton and a number five between quilting needle that Primitive Gatherings has. You also want to make sure that you quilt on the appliques. So on the background, I chose the same color as the background. And then on the appliques, I matched that color when I stitched on. So red on red, green on green. One of the things I want to point out on this quilt that I tried, because remember, you can do whatever you want. There are no rules to quilting. I don't care what anybody says, there are better methods, there are time and tested ways, but when I first started doing this, I didn't know that you couldn't put wool on regular cotton. And I don't think nobody did it before I did because I didn't think there was any rules and I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. So I think I created a little trend of putting wool on just regular cotton fabric. Instead, we've all seen wool on wool, but wool tends to get pretty pricey. So I wanted some ulterior methods than the price of the wool. This one has a wool binding on. I wanted to see how that would look because this is wool here and I didn't want to put a different fabric here like a homespun or a different fabric. I wanted it to match exactly this applique prairie point not prairie point, but just triangle points. I didn't want this to be different. So that's why I actually put a single fold wool binding on this. Now let's look at the back. Then you'll see the hand quilting here. The back is homespun. I would never put another wool piece on for backing, but I wanted it to mimic wool. You could have easily put flannel on the back and then there is probably only a piece of very fine, fine batting in here or just a piece of flannel. A nice thick flannel in there would also work, work well. So that is the wool on wool hand quilted. The next up we have again, wool on wool. Look, I used the same background. That's how nice it was. The only thing different with this one is that it was machine quilted. Now when I hand quilt, I quilt hand quilt on a frame. You can hand, I think it'd be hard to hand quilt in a hoop with a wool quilt, but this one was machine quilted. So that can easily be done as well. Again, make sure you go around all the appliques so nothing is making this big puff in the middle of the quilt. So the quilter actually went in there to nail down and make a nice even quilting um, thing. So here's the back of this one. Again, a homespun. And you can really see how she outlined the appliques 
And then, could she have maybe put something in that sashing? Yes, but maybe she didn't want to put something that was going to overtake the simpleness of this design. And I think she used the lines in the pattern as well. I'll make sure Kaylee lists who the quilter of this was. Next up, we have wool applique on flannel that has been hand quilted. This is one of my earliest wool applique quilts. So let's take a closer look at it. All right, so the reason why I know this is for sure one of the earliest ones is I didn't even blanket stitch these. These are all just whip stitched. Everything on that. So don't think that when you start doing this that you're, you're not gonna evolve as a stitcher. You're gonna get better and your skill set's gonna get better as well if you continue to do it and are as passionate about it as, as I obviously am. Now this one was hand quilted. So it's hand quilted again in the number 12 pearl cotton. Black here. I think black on the whole thing. Like I said, it's probably 20 years ago I made this quilt. Even on the, I can tell like in the bud here, I have black stitches. I have a, just a diagonal grid through it. And then once in a while I did like a, a heart with a star in it. And then here, this is, has like diagonals out this way as well. This way here and then that way there. And this quilt is flannel again, flannel binding, homespun backing. And there's hardly anything in here. There's a piece of flannel in here for sure. And it's, it looks really heavy, but it's really not. So that is the example of the wool applique on flannel. Then we have flannel with wool applique that has been machine quilted. So this is an awesome example of flannel that looks like wool. So you can't really tell that this is not wool because these flannels are designed to look like they are wool. Now this is a normal way to quilt. So you all, you do your appliques first and then you layer it with batting and backing and then it is quilted. So we didn't quilt it before. Some people have the, the idea that you quilt before you put those appliques on and that's not how that goes. So Linda from the Quilted Pineapple and her master quilting adds a whole nother dimension to this simple wool quilt. So on this one, we chose to put a solid black flannel and there might be like wool batting in this one as well. And that's what makes that quilting pattern pop up a little bit, a really fine piece of wool batting. And you really get a good look here at how much quilting is on there. We also have wool applique on just regular cotton fabrics. I just picked this little quilt here to just show you that not all your quilts have to be big. You can do little projects as well with wool applique and you can take any applique design and switch it over to a wool applique. And the best thing about wool applique is 
everybody can do it. It's just fused down and then stitched around. There's no needle turning any edges and that makes it super simple and a beginning project. This one also has been machine quilted. I just did this simply on my, my own little sewing machine, my Juki, with a walking foot. Nice and close together. They're probably about three quarters of an inch. And then I, I like to use the 80-20 batting in my little quilts or the Quilter's Dream Request or Select. Those are also nice battings. Here's the back, simple binding, single fold binding on a little quilt. I probably shouldn't, I'm not like the most perfect. <laughs> but some things don't have to be heirloom quality. These are just fun little wall hangings for you to enjoy throughout your home. Last example, just wool applique on homespun. I want you to understand homespun. It's a beautiful fabric. I think some people think it's flannel and heavy. It is not. It's just super soft brushed cotton that's woven. So one side will be like flat and the other side will have a little bit of brushing on it. And I think it pairs really well with the wool applique. So that's what I just want to point out with this one. This one has been long arm machine quilted. Just a simple meander, some background filler in there. I think they call that McTavishing. Make sure you, again that you go around the appliques. Bias binding on the homespun here because that's just fun. Not a necessity. Here's the backing. Same homespun. And I don't like to see a lot of light threads on, on dark fabric. So that's why we always choose a darker thread for your machine quilting or like the darkest light to use. So that's one of the things to keep in mind when you talk to a long arm quilter about what thread they're going to use. Some of them you can just say do your thing and some of them you might want to tell them if you have a certain thing that, that might bother you. And mine is white thread on dark fabrics. Then the next most frequent question we get with wool applique is, do you wash your wool quilt or how do you wash your wool quilt? So let's kind of back up. And one of the things I want to point out is I believe that quilts have intended use. So with that means a lot of the wool applique that we do is art. I don't let anybody sleep underneath my wool applique quilt that's been hand stitched, hand quilted. Nobody's drooling on this thing. So this is art. This is not a bed quilt. Now, if you want to put it on your bed and you want to display it and then you roll it off at night before you go to bed, that's all great. No, no problem with that. And it's up to you. If you want your quilts to be used in love, again, you can do whatever you want with your quilts. So that's, I keep that in mind when you make a quilt or when you gift a quilt. I gift a quilt that they can use as a bed quilt for a bed, piece quilt. I don't usually give them a wool apple quilt to use on their bed. Now, how do you wash it? Let's say something happened and you need to wash it or it got dirty or some situation where you had to wash your quilt. It's very possible. Remember that all the wool has been pre-shunk in the dyeing process or in the felting process before it is sold to you at any quilt shop or at least primitive gatherings. So cold water and then dry, dry flat. You could fluff it in the dryer, like on low heat or no heat for a little bit, just to soften the fibers. But then I would like lay out a sheet and let it dry flat. That's how I would wash my quilt if I had to wash a wool quilt. Okay, and then one last little tip. So while washing or getting your quilt wet, make sure that you do not use hot water because any wool will run with hot water. I don't care if it's been set in the dyeing fabric, you can get wool to bleed if it's, if it's hot and wet. All right, so as you can see, the possibilities are endless on what you wanna use, how you wanna do it, what battings you use, if you use a batting at all. But I think a batting helps stabilize it, even if it is a piece of flannel. So there you go, that's what we have for you on wool applique. 
So thanks for hanging out with us here. And if you like any of the projects that we shown, make sure you check the description underneath the video and all the information will be listed there.